Hello calculus students. Welcome back to another test prep walkthrough. We're going to look at the stuff on chain rule today. Uh, remember, you're supposed to try these problems on your own. Do not watch this first. Try them on your own. See what you're struggling with and then just come back and watch the ones that you need help on. So this first one has uh, this right here. We've got the entire thing we're trying to take a derivative of. So to do that, we've got to recognize that you actually have product rule going on because of this multiplication. So what we're going to do is to find f prime, you're going to say f prime of x is going to equal the derivative of the first is just 1 times g of h of x. Then we have to add, because we're doing the product rule, now we're going to leave the x alone and find the derivative of this crazy thing right here, g of h of x. So what that is, I'll leave this in red so you can see the difference. We're going to take the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is g. So I'll say times g prime of, and then you do not touch the inside. You leave it alone. So h of x. Then we have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside, which is just h prime of x. OK, there, we're done. This is the entire thing here is the derivative of f prime. So when it comes up here and it says find f prime of 3, all we're doing is going to plug in a 3 anywhere you see an x. So there, 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 and there. We plug in a 3, and you've got to use these other hints up here to figure out what that would come out to be. Second problem. We saw one of these earlier in unit 3, and these are going to keep coming up, so you want to get really good at them. When you have a continuous function and a differentiable function, they're both, and it's piecewise. What that means is we're just going to take these two pieces and set them equal to each other. So 1 plus 3bx plus 2x squared has to equal mx plus b. Now, when do they equal each other? The pieces are coming together right here at x equals 1. So when x equals 1, these two pieces will equal each other, which means you plug in a 1 into the x here and into the x here. So both of these should have a number 1. Oh, whoops, and there's another x there. So plug a 1 in there. Now that's going to leave you a problem because you have a b and an m that will not uh, cancel. You've got two variables. That's because, if you remember when we did this last time, you have to have another set of equations, which is the differentiable part. So I'm going to write down here below it so you can see them separate. We're going to take the derivative of this piece. So remember that b and m are just treated like real numbers up here, right? So the derivative of this first piece, derivative of 1 is nothing, it's 0. The derivative of this term would be 3b. The derivative of this term would be a plus 4x. And then that has to equal the derivative of the second piece, which is just m. See, it's a coefficient. So the derivative here is m. The derivative of b is a constant, so it's a 0. And then that's it. So when does this happen? When x equals 1. Oh my goodness, there's my phone. Hold on. OK, sorry, my phone was ringing. I really don't remember what I was talking about. So uh, yeah. So then when you finish, how, what are we doing? Oh, x has got to equal 1. So then when you plug a 1 in here, you're going to have another equation. And now you have a system of equations between the two. Remember, all these x's are becoming 1's. And it becomes an Algebra 1 problem in which you have to use substitution or elimination or something fancy like that. Number 3. As you read through this, let me remind you, when I'm reading these, it says a particle moves on the x-axis with the position defined by blah, 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 where t is greater than 0. OK, so that just means time has to be greater than or equal to 0, so no negative numbers. What is the velocity of the particle when its acceleration is 0? When I read through this, this right here, I'm just like blah, blah, blah. I don't even think about that. I know that might seem like the most important part, but it's not the most important part of the equation, or the, the paragraph. The most important part is, what is the velocity? I'm trying to find the velocity when acceleration is 0. So I want velocity, this is what I want, at the point when that of t, what time value? When acceleration is equal to 0. So in order to know when this happens, I need to find the acceleration equation. That's just the second derivative. So real quick, what's v of t? v of t, let me move this stuff down, out of the way. So v of t is going to equal 
3t squared minus 12t plus 2. And then acceleration is going to equal 6t minus 12. So we're going to take acceleration, set it equal to 0. If we set this equal to 0 and solve it, you're going to end up with t equals 2. So it's asking what is the velocity of the particle when its acceleration is 0. This when part right here, that happens when time equals 2. Uh, and it doesn't say the units. It doesn't say 2 seconds or 2 minutes or whatever. So that doesn't matter. So you just plug a 2 into velocity, and you got it. Number four, this has got some pretty crazy stuff with the chain rule going on. So the function has to equal, let's rewrite this with a 1 plus x to the 1 half raised to the 1 half. So I'm rewriting it with a 1 half power instead of the square root power. That'll help us with uh, trying to take the chain rule. Okay, so now we go to the derivative. The derivative equals, bring this 1 half down to the front. So 1 half. Inside, don't touch this. Just leave it alone. Raised to the 1 half. And now we are raised to subtract 1. 1 half minus 1 is a negative 1 half. OK, now we, so we did the outside. Now we've got to go on the inside and take the derivative of that. So now we'll say times. And the derivative of the inside is going to be derivative of 1 is 0. So I just have to do the derivative of this term, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. OK, there's the derivative. Now the hard part is the algebra part, which is just simplifying this. Change them back into square roots. The negative 1 halves come down to the bottom. So you got to take this and somehow manipulate it, and it will, should look like one of those. Last one, number five. Just because you see this statement up here that you're allowed to use a graphing calculator does not mean that you should just grab a calculator and try and figure all this out on the calculator. You could do that. You could do this, math 8, math 8, but that's math 8 only does uh, one derivative. So this gets a little complicated to do this. Let me just show you what's a much easier way. Start with just using uh, no calculator and take the derivative. We need to get second derivative, right? So let's start off with the first derivative. So f prime is going to be the 5 comes down, 1 plus x over 20 raised to the fourth. And then times the derivative of the inside is just 1 20th. Right? That's 0. This is just 1 20th times x, so it's 1 20th. OK, now clean that up. So before we go to the second derivative, we're going to take the second derivative. But let's not do it yet. Let's clean this up. 5 and 1 20th, that reduces to 1 4th. So we have 1 4th, 1 plus x over 20 raised to the 4th. OK, now take the derivative. 4 comes down, cancels with that, and we're left with 1 plus x over 20 raised to the third power times 1 20th. There we go. There is the second derivative. Now you can plug in a 40, and you can use a calculator to help you get the answer, and that'll help you out there. So again, just because you can use a calculator does not mean the calculator is the first thing to grab. Uh, it might slow you down in some points. And that's it. Good luck on that mastery check.